good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for attending this special webinar on our South Africa tour with Senior Discovery Tours featuring South African expert Peter Myberg. My name is Natalia and I have been working as a tour manager for Senior Discovery Tours for over 10 years and I have had the privilege of escorting many incredible tours, including the exotic tour that we will be discussing today. Please note that everyone is muted to allow for the full enjoyment of this presentation. Should you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the Q&A section located at either the bottom or the top of your screen, depending on your device. On our agenda today, we will briefly discuss some updates regarding health and safety regulations and our new rewards and referral programs. Our guest speaker, Peter, will take us on a virtual tour to explore South Africa. There will then be a question and answer period and a chance for one lucky attendee to win a $100 gift certificate towards their next trip with Senior Discovery Tours. The health and safety of our clients and staff are of the utmost importance, and we are thrilled that we have been awarded the Safe Travel Stamp by the World Travel and Tourism Council. Vaccination against COVID-19 will be required to participate in all of our tours. For your peace of mind, our insurance policy does cover against COVID-19 when traveling with us. During the travel pause, we have been busy enhancing our tour programs and operations. We are also introducing our exciting new discovery rewards and Blue Sky Referrals programs. We will formally announce the details of the programs shortly and send you all a link to enroll. In addition, another amazing new program is our Insider Club Benefits. If you're part of a club or association, we will offer a 4% commission that will be paid directly to the club or association. For more information or to book a virtual presentation for your club, please contact us. Please rest assured that you can book your senior discovery tours holiday with complete peace of mind. We will continue to be the travel industry leader by offering a refund policy that is far more flexible and generous than any other tour operators. You may cancel your tour for any reason up to 60 days prior to departure and receive a full refund. Now, on with our program. Today, we are joined by South Africa expert Peter Myberg, who will take us on a virtual tour to discover South Africa. Peter and his team have been the ground operators in South Africa for senior discovery tours since 1995, and they are responsible for all the tour arrangements that will make you fall in love with this destination. Together with the tour manager, Peter enjoys accompanying travelers from the moment they land until the moment they leave to ensure a smooth and carefree adventure. Hi, Peter. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Natalia. Sabona, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we say hello in Zulu, one of the 11 official languages of South Africa. Um, most people in South Africa speak their mother tongue, whether it's Zulu or Xhosa or Sutu or Tswana or whatever, as well as English. And so do I. My mother tongue is actually Afrikaans. Um, so English is my second language. Uh, therefore, please excuse my accent. And also, if I made some grammar, grammatical mistakes or mistakes with my English, please excuse me. Um, so why should you come to South Africa? Ladies and gentlemen, because it is quintessential Africa, but it is made easy. Here you can still see wildlife like lion and leopard and hyena and elephants and all of them in their natural environment. Um, and we have a lot of cultural diversity. It's a very diverse tour program that's been tried and tested for many, many years. Um, so it's easy. We have a very good infrastructure in South Africa, good roads and airports. Um, so you can come and do Africa, but it'll, it'll be a, a, a lot easier than most other African countries. Um, to give you a short uh, idea of what you can expect or what we will be doing, there's a little bit of an overview. You will be landing in Johannesburg, spending a few nights, about two nights in Johannesburg area. 
then we'll be flying to Zimbabwe, a neighboring country um, where we will visit the Victoria Falls. After two nights at Victoria Falls, we transfer into another country, Botswana, where you will uh, be going to the Chobe Game Reserve. After two nights at Chobe, we fly back to Johannesburg and then transfer to the famous Kruger National Park. We'll be spending three nights in the Kruger Park area before returning to Johannesburg and flying down to George, my hometown, which is on the garden route. We will be spending uh, three nights on the garden route uh, of South Africa before we'll be transferring towards Cape Town where the tour ends after four nights in Cape Town. So that's just a general overview of, of the tour. Uh, we're going to tell you about uh, the tour now day by day. Um, so the tour starts off in Johannesburg. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the financial hub of South Africa. It's not one of our capitals. We actually have two capitals, uh, Pretoria and Cape Town. Uh, uh, yours is Ottawa, of course, but Toronto is the financial hub. And it's the same with Johannesburg. It was started due to the discovery of gold, and it is still the financial capital, if you want, of the country. It's not a very touristy place, but it is where most of, you, of the international flights arrive to. So you will be landing, and we will be staying right at the airport at a hotel that you can actually walk to uh, after you come uh, through uh, immigration and customs. And um, because we fly out two days later to Zimbabwe, we, uh, we found that this uh, airport hotel, the city lodge at the airport works best. So on your day of arrival, um, most flights arrive in the later evening. We'll just be going to the hotel and uh, getting you into bed after that long flight. And then we'll be starting with our sightseeing the next day. Our first uh, visit on this tour is to the Apartheid Museum. Now, Apartheid is a social and uh, political system that was tried here in South Africa, where there was formal segregation. Uh, but unlike other places in the world, the majority of the population, about 80% of the population, were pretty much oppressed by, by, by a minority. Um, this museum is an audiovisual museum, and uh, it tells us about the history of South Africa, how apartheid came about, how it was implemented, how people like Mr. Nelson Mandela and many other freedom fighters uh, fought against apartheid, and how it was eventually overturned into the full democracy that we are today. You will be spending about two and a half hours uh, at this um, uh, museum, uh, audiovisual museum, as I mentioned. Not an easy museum, but it is an, a very important part of our history. Um, so on that first uh, morning, we're going to be spending some time there before going to Soweto. Soweto is, um, is the largest African township, as they refer to here in South Africa. Uh, in, in the country, and um, it is surely going to be quite a culture shock. We start off our afternoon in Soweto by having lunch in a shabin. Now, shabin is an Irish word that um, refers to a speakeasy. In the apartheid years, Black people were not allowed to have restaurants and clubs and bars and, and places to socialize. So they had these underground facilities, if you want to call that, where they came and, and they socialized. And in, uh, in tune with that, we're going to have lunch at uh, Robbie's place, where you're going to eat what Sowetans eat, the typical Sowetan food. Um, thereafter, we're going to have a tour of Soweto itself um, being conducted by uh, Sowetans. We get guides that grew up there and know the place like the back of their hands. And it, it will make for a very, very interesting um, first day in South Africa. Following uh, our Soweto tour, we carry on um, for, uh, to the restaurant where we will have dinner, which is called the carnivore restaurant. You know what a carnivore is? A carnivore is a meat eater. So if you like meat, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to love this evening. If you're a vegetarian, perhaps not so much. Um, so apart from the normal beef and pork and chicken that 
you know, they will have on the menu. Um, this restaurant actually specializes uh, in some of the game meats too. So it depends what is on the menu on that specific uh, night, but you can probably get to eat impala or kudu or some of the other antelope, maybe some zebra, who knows? There might even be giraffe on the menu that night. Um, it is a, a, a real eating experience and I think a wonderful first dinner in South Africa. You will be going to bed very tired after your first full long day, but the idea is to try and get you into the right sleeping pattern and not that you will not be bothered by um, jet lag too much. So after dinner, it's back to the hotel where we will just uh, just overnight. Then the next day, we transfer to Zimbabwe. So we will catch a flight from Johannesburg to the little town of Victoria Falls. The town is actually called Victoria Falls after the famous um, falls that we will visit. So once we land in Zimbabwe, we will have to clear customs and immigration. It's a new country. You will actually get three stamps in your passport on this trip, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Botswana. Once uh, we've done with the formalities, we will get you checked into the hotel. You'll have a little bit of time uh, at leisure. And then by about four o'clock, we go out on our first wildlife uh, excursion. Um, it is um, a, a sundown cruise on the Zambezi River. The Zambezi is the fourth largest river in Africa and the one that feeds the Victoria Falls. So we'll be looking to see if we can find elephants, perhaps some hippo, crocodile, uh, and lots of very interesting waterborne birds and so on. Uh, of course, with game viewing, you never know what you're going to get, but um, it will surely impress you uh, to have your first game activity right on what day two of your visit to South Africa. After that, we go back to the hotel, the Kingdom Hotel in um, Victoria Falls. It is very well situated. You can actually see the mist of the falls from the hotel. You can actually hear the falls from the hotel. Are we just going to have dinner and overnight? The next morning, we start off with our tour of the Victoria Falls itself. <clears throat> now, the Victoria Falls is really quite impressive. I love your Niagara Falls. I've visited them and seen them, and um, it is spectacular. Um, Victoria Falls is about twice as high, though, and about three times as wide as Niagara is. So it is one of the natural wonders of the world, and it really is something to behold. Because it gets quite warm in that area, we actually leave very early. So you'll have a very early breakfast, and then we start our tour of the falls. Again, with specialist guides, they will take us on a walking tour, which uh, is about between two and three kilometers that you will walk. Um, so we try and do that before the midday heat and the, and, and, and the evaporation of created by the falls um, can bother us too much. Uh, we should be back at the hotel between 10 and 11 o'clock or so. And then you have the rest of the day free to enjoy um, the beautiful grounds of the hotel or to perhaps go to one of the craft markets and curio markets that are there. There's also the optional excursion of a helicopter ride to see the falls from above, which I will highly recommend. Um, so the evening, um, we will go out to what is called the Boma restaurant. Now, the Boma is, uh, a Boma is an encirclement or a corral, if you want to call it that. Um, and on this specific evening, we're going to have a lot of African food. There's uh, usually warthog, for instance, on the menu. Or you could try the Mopani worms, which if you eat one, you actually get a certificate that states, I have eaten a Mopani worm. It's a real fun evening with cultural entertainment, lots of dancing, tribal dancing. And one of my favorite activities at the end of the evening, after dinner, they give each participant, each person that visited a little drum. And then with a the drum master, they teach us rhythms of African music. And uh, we'll have some uh, great drumming and um, even some competitions. Um, so it's really quite fun, a, a really lovely evening. Um, following that, you'll just 
be very tired and off to bed. <clears throat> the next morning, we start uh, our transfer to Chobi Game Reserve. Chobi is one of the contributories to the Zambezi River. Um, it is in Botswana and it is renowned for its elephant population. Uh, they have over 100,000 elephants in this game reserve. Um, so when we get, uh, once we've left Zimbabwe and entered Botswana, we'll be doing border crossings. Uh, we'll get to our hotel, the Moana Lodge, and then this afternoon we'll be going on our first act game activity in Chobe, which will probably be a, a game cruise. In the afternoon, the elephants come down to the river and um, and that's the opportunity to get up real close and personal with them. Fantastic bird life in Chobe. Uh, and you get to see other game as well, lechwe and uh, other antelope. Um, so very, very interesting um, first excursion. Uh, dinner will be back at the hotel at the Moana Lodge, a gorgeous hotel right on the, um, on the banks of the Chobe River. And then the next morning, we start a game drive. So we'll be going on these open safari vehicles and we'll be searching for, um, for wildlife. We'll have specialist guides on the, um, on the vehicles and their eyesight is just unbelievable. And they will help us to try and see as much game as possibly can. Following our game drive, which starts very early, you'll actually only have breakfast after the game drive. Um, you will have some free time at the hotel um, to just relax a little bit before um, a, 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 another game activity in the afternoon. So we stay over at the Moana Lodge, which is um, really quite a beautiful, beautiful hotel. Um, as you can see there, lovely pool right on the river, lots of relaxation, relaxing areas. Um, uh, really a, a nice hotel, one of my favorites um, in, in Botswana. Day after that is basically a traveling day. We have to get back to Johannesburg and start making our way to Kruger National Park. So we'll have breakfast, check out of the hotel, go to the Kasani Airport and catch a flight to Johannesburg. Once we've cleared customs and immigrations again, uh, we'll get on the bus and, 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 and make, uh, make use of the sunlight, try and move towards Kruger National Park. So we'll be staying over in a, just a convenient next to the highway sort of hotel um, in order to really have more time at our disposal the next day, because this is the day that we do the panorama route. <clears throat> Now, the panorama route starts with a visit to the gorgeous little town of Dahlstrom. This is what you can see in the picture here. It's a picturesque little town um, known to be the trout capital of South Africa with lots of little galleries and bistros and coffee shops and craft shops and so on. Um, so we'll give you some time to explore and enjoy this great little town before we carry on to the Blyder River Canyon. Lunch is included en route on this day, and then we'll be spending the afternoon exploring the Blyder River Canyon. It is supposed to be, according to my guide notes, the third largest canyon in the world. I'm not so sure about it, but it is really quite spectacular. Unlike many of your great canyons like the Grand Canyon or even the Fish River Canyon in Namibia, this one is lush and green and beautiful, and we'll be visiting um, all the tourist hotspots like the three rondavals that you see here on the right hand side, three round huts, or the big view on the left hand side is from God's window. Um, a lot of walking on this day uh, to get to Burke's Lock potholes and all the interesting things that they are to see. Um, you'll be uh, doing a little bit of walking and we will be arriving at our hotel for the next three nights. The um, Protea Kruger Gate by about six o'clock or so in the afternoon. This is probably my most favorite hotel in the world, Protea Hotel Kruger Gate. It is literally across the river from Kruger Park. Um, so it's just the Sabi River that separates it from the park itself. It has beautiful amenities. Uh, if you look down on the right hand side here, you will see um, one of the game viewing areas where you can actually enjoy a gin and tonic while see 
maybe see some elephant or maybe some some hippopotamus in the water or whatever. Um, so it's just dinner in the hotel buffet style. And uh, then it's off to bed because the next day, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most important days of your trip. That is when we go to Kruger National Park. So we're going to have <coughs> a full day in the park. We'll be, uh, I'll wake you up very early uh, on that morning, probably around 4.30 or 5 o'clock or so. You'll get a wakey, wakey. Time to get up. You'll get to have a cup of coffee and maybe some rusts before we get onto these vehicles. And we spend the full day in the park hunting the big five. Now, the big five are animals that were actually named by the early hunters. They are animals that are too dangerous to approach on foot. <coughs> so they include the lion and the leopard, the two cats, and then the big animals, the elephant, the buffalo, and the rhinoceros. So we try and find these. Of course, there are many other animals as well. Lots of antelope, giraffe, zebra, wild dogs, and so on. Um, we will be spending, uh, having lunch, uh, excuse me, breakfast in a, is a break, boxed breakfast, which we will have somewhere in the park. And then lunch will be uh, a, a hot lunch in the park itself at one of the restaurants. We should be getting back to our hotel by about four, between four and five o'clock in the afternoon, after having seen all the animals and wonderful birds that we have in the Kruger National Park. It is a big park, ladies and gentlemen. It is larger than Israel. Um, it is actually larger than the Serengeti or the Ngorogoro Crater or the Masai Mara. Um, but we will see a short, small bit of it. And um, tonight at dinner around the campfire, you can share your pictures and your experiences before going to bed, hopefully very, very satisfied. Day after that is what we call night drive day. So you'll get a well-earned little break um, to enjoy the beautiful grounds of the hotel, perhaps write some postcards, maybe do some washing, walk and go and uh, do a little bit of shopping. And then by about four o'clock in the afternoon, we will leave on what is referred to as a night drive. Now, these are done by the Kruger Park personnel themselves. No other private vehicles are allowed in the park uh, to do game drives at night. So we'll be doing it with uh, the National Parks Board personnel. Uh, we'll start off at around four o'clock when the sun still shines and see whatever we can find. Um, they can also go on routes that the normal vehicles cannot go on to. Um, we'll, have, we'll stop somewhere for a sundowner to watch the sunset. And then after dark, we use the spotlights to try and find the nocturnal animals. Many of your um, cats are actually more active at night uh, cats like leopards and lions and even many of the smaller cats, the caracal and, uh, and so on. But there are also hyenas, there are owls and night birds. So we'll use spotlights to see what we can find. We should be back at the hotel around about eight o'clock in the evening. You'll go and have dinner and then off to bed again. <clears throat> the next day we will be traveling down to the garden. So we make a beeline for Johannesburg. Unlike when we came towards Kruger, we used the Panorama route by, via Blyder River Canyon. Now we make a beeline straight back to Johannesburg, get on a flight and fly down to the gorgeous little town of George. I particularly like that flight because it brings me home. I live in George. So um, we'll be staying at the King George Hotel. You can see some pictures of it uh, for the three nights uh, of our stay here uh, on the garden route. It is called the garden route, ladies and gentlemen, because it's in an overlapping area where it gets rain, um, like the rest of the country in summer, but also like Cape Town in winter. And it is nestled between a mountain range, the Otoniqua Mountains and the Indian Ocean. So this creates um, um, a lot of rainfall uh, and hence uh, called the garden route. We'll use George as a base to explore the rest of it. On our first day, we will uh, be going to the town of Neisner. And this has uh, been voted South Africa's favorite town for many occasions by South Africans. Our excursion to Neisner starts out 
with a visit um, to a little primary school here in George with whom Senior Discovery Tours have had a long relationship. Um, and um, these kids will sing for us and they'll dance and the uh, headmaster will tell us about all the challenges that education faces here in South Africa uh, and what they have to do to educate the kids. So a bit of a tearjerker day. I'm sure there will be a, a hanky used here and there, but very, very interesting. Um, thereafter, we carry on to Nysa, as I said, one of South Africa's favorite little towns. It is situated on a huge estuary and um, we'll give you some free time to enjoy the town, walk around a little bit, do a little bit of shopping and so on. Then um, just before lunch, we'll be going on what is referred to as the Featherbed Nature Reserve excursion, which entails a um, ferry ride across this gorgeous estuary to one of the Nisna heads. I'll tell you more about that when you visit. Um, once we're uh, on the other side, we'll have a buffet lunch before a tractor trailer ride takes us way up where we will have fantastic views of the estuary and the Indian Ocean and the gorgeous little town of Nisna. This is followed by an optional walk through the indigenous forest uh, with a guide that tells us about all the different plants and birds and so on that we get in this specific area. Most of your pot plants that you have in Canada actually come from Africa. So um, very, very interesting. On our way back to the hotel, uh, we'll stop at a restaurant called Salinas. You can picture of it here on the right hand side. It is right on the ocean and we'll have a seafood type dinner this evening um, in tune with the day. This is um, one of me and my wife's favorite restaurants. Uh, we often go there and it'll be a pleasure to show you this place as well. You will be tired tonight and you will go to bed very satisfied after a lovely day. Our next day, ladies and gentlemen, takes us to Ootswuren. Now, Ootswuren is a town on the other side of the mountain range. So where it's lush and green, on this side of the mountains, once you go over to the other side, you're actually in a semi-desert called the Little Karoo. Um, our day in Oatswaran starts off with a visit to an ostrich farm. Yes, Oatswaran is known as the ostrich capital of the world. Um, they have over 100,000 ostriches at any given time. and uh, They um, are, are grown for a variety of reasons. Um, and we will be taught all about this. You'll get up close and personal with them. Great photo opportunities, as you can see here. And then we'll also have ostrich for lunch. Um, ostrich meat is actually a red meat and very delicious and healthier than, uh, than beef, for instance. After our visit to the ostrich farm, we carry on to the Kango Caves. Now, I've had many tourists from Canada say they've been to caves all over the world but they've not seen anything that, um, that compares with the Kango Caves. We'll be doing uh, about the first five chambers or so before returning to George and then going out to one, one of the other favorite restaurants that we have in town. <clears throat> so the next day we start traveling towards Cape Town. Um, our last leg of this tour, we'll be uh, traveling along the coastline um, in a westerly direction, and we'll have stop for lunch first at a town called Hermanus. Now, Hermanus is supposed to have the best land-based whale watching in the world. We have the southern right whale and also humpback whales that come from the uh, South Pole when it freezes over during winter to come and have their babies here in the warm Indian Ocean waters of Walker Bay. So um, they come and they mate, and we'll, uh, whatever you do in Harmonis, we keep one eye on the ocean, because you might just be lucky enough to see, um, to see one of the whales breaching or some other activities. Harmonis is a gorgeous little town, um, the playground of the rich and famous in South Africa. So uh, you will have some free time, you'll have lunch there, do a little bit of walking around, exploring the place before we carry on towards Cape Town. Now in Cape Town, we wanna go up Table Mountain, first of all. Um, you'll see some pictures of it here on the left-hand side. Uh, must be one of the best known mountains in the world. 
Um, it is spectacular to see. Um, sometimes we will be able to go up, but it'll be covered in clouds. You can't see anything. Other times it'll be beautiful and clear, but uh, the wind might be too, too strong to, for the cable cars to operate. So the rule here is always, as soon as you can, you go up the mountain. So once we get to uh, Cape Town, we'll try and take you up Table Mountain straight away. It gives you a nice bird's eye view of the city as well to orient yourself and uh, just get to get to see the lay of the land. Um, after we uh, have been up and down Table Mountain, we go and check into a hotel for the last four nights, I think, of the tour. Um, this is the Peninsula All Suite Hotel, beautiful pictures that you can see of it here. Um, gorgeous hotel that uh, have uh, all the rooms overlook the ocean. Uh, and that'll be our base for exploring Cape Town in the next few days. So the next day, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> is surely uh, one of the most memorable days of your life because you'll be visiting Robben Island. Now, if it sounds familiar, it is because you've probably heard over the news about it during the time of apartheid. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where Mr. Nelson Mandela and many other political prisoners were kept um, in, imprisoned um, to take them out of society during their resistance uh, against apartheid. So it's a boat ride out to the island, then a tour of the island itself, which was used as a leper colony at one point. Uh, so all about the history, you'll go to the lime quarries where Mr. Mandela and many of the other people actually had to do hard labor. And then uh, you'll get a tour of the prison facility itself. Now, this, these tours are done by ex-prisoners. So people that were actually imprisoned here are the actual guides that show you and tell you about, uh, about Robben Island. Once we've taken the boat back to um, Cape Town, we will have lunch at the VNA waterfront. And thereafter, a city tour of Cape Town, uh, where we will uh, see District 6, for instance, or the Malay Quarter. Um, we will visit the Kirsten Bosch Botanical Gardens, regarded as one of the prettiest botanical gardens in the world. Uh, because of its beautiful setting, it's on the slopes of Table Mountain. So um, this evening, we'll finish off with dinner in a Malay restaurant. Now, the Malay were the slaves that were brought by the Dutch in the early days, and they brought with them their food, which is uh, slightly um, spicy, but really something to enjoy. Um, so that'll be our first day in, in Cape Town. Our uh, second day in Cape Town is one of my favorites. It is known as Wineland's Day. Because this is the day, ladies and gentlemen, when we go and we drink wine. Hoo -hoo! The tour starts <clears throat> um, early in the morning. We travel towards the town of Paul, and we will first visit the language monument or the Tol monument, which is a monument to the Afrikaans language, one of the official languages in South Africa. Um, some very interesting place, but what I like more about it than anything else is the fantastic views that we have of the winelands from there. Thereafter, we visit another famous uh, town called Stellenbosch. You might have heard of wines from Paul and Stellenbosch. We will have two wine tastings, ladies and gentlemen, um, and also lunch included on this day. And as I always say, to know if the people enjoy it, just listen to the volume on the bus. It's usually much louder in the afternoon traveling back to Cape Town than it was in the morning traveling to the winelands. Um, dinner will be at a restaurant tonight. And um, yeah, there will be wine at that dinner as well. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we go to what is called the Cape Point Day. Um, we will be taking the bus from our hotel via a very, very scenic route called um, Chapman's Peak Drive. Um, it's, it's supposed to be one of the most scenic routes in the world. Um, then we'll be getting to Cape Point, where you will take a funicular up to a high lighthouse and get these fantastic views of 
the romantic meeting place of the Indian and Atlantic Ocean. It is not really where they meet, but this is what Capetonians believe. We'll uh, have the obligatory photo behind the sign that says Cape of Good Hope before we have fish and chips at a local uh, restaurant. After lunch, we visit the penguins. Oh, they are so cute, ladies and gentlemen. And you get really close to them. And you can actually take fantastic pictures of the penguins and also learn all about the African penguins. Another full day in South Africa that, that ends off with dinner, ladies and gentlemen, our farewell dinner, unfortunately, at an African-themed restaurant called uh, Gold. Um, here they bring you little morsels of food from all over the continent. So you'll have <clears throat> starters, you know, might be chicken piri piri from Mozambique, and then they'll they'll be couscous from you know Algeria, or they'll be bourrevos like a sausage, or springbok poiki or stuff like that from South Africa. So initially, when they bring the the food, you will think, oh my gosh, I'm not going to get fed tonight. But believe me, ladies and gentlemen, you will roll out of that place. And the food is delicious. And the decor is fantastic. And the entertainment is unbelievable. Fantastic dancing and singing. Really a high note to end your visit to South Africa. On your last day, <clears throat> we uh, will be doing a boat excursion in the morning to a Cape Fur Seal breeding colony in the gorgeous town of Hout, Hout Bay. The Cape Fur Seals are protected. They are not hunted in South Africa. And it's a really nice excursion before we uh, come back to the Cape Town waterfront or the v &A waterfront for some last minute shopping, uh, an early dinner before we take you to the airport for your flight home. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically the tour of South Africa. Um, we are very privileged that we also conduct the senior discovery tours to, uh, to uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar. Um, so if you're interested in wildlife, you should really consider this one. Uh, we visit very famous game reserves like the Ngorogoro Crater and the Serengeti and Lake Manyara. And you might even get to get a glimpse of Kilimanjaro. And then the tour ends with a visit to the Spice Island of Zanzibar. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, Waza, that is Zulu for come. Wow, Peter, thank you for that incredibly in-depth and remarkable presentation. Please note our next offering of the South Africa tour is this coming October, and the Tanzania and Zanzibar tour, tour will be departing in November. Both adventures are now open for booking. We will now move on to our question and answer segment with Peter. If you have a question, please enter it into the Q&A box and I will pass it on to him. Peter, speechless. <laughs> you had incredible photos. It truly felt like we were there with you. So we cannot wait to go, but we do have some questions for you. Um, and let's start with all the food that you were showing us. Um, it looks like we are going to be visiting very local restaurants and trying the local cuisine and, and whatever we are, we'll be trying what they eat. So that's fabulous. Um, and since we will have, we'll be having so many diverse uh, different type of meals. Can you accommodate special diets? Oh, yes, Natalia. Um, and nowadays, uh, you know, many people are gluten intolerant or they're diabetic or they're vegans or vegetarians. So absolutely, um, as long as we know beforehand, we can notify um, the hotels and the restaurants and they will make sure that, um, that there's something to eat um, that... that um, you know, conforms with your dietary requirements. That's great to know. Thank you for that. And we have lots of your fans that are currently watching and they're all saying hi and they all oh, want to go back you. to be there with you. So come, just... please come. <laughs> <laughs> hi from all your fans. <laughs> thank you. Um, and on that note about the meals, um, can we drink the tap water? 
Yes, yes. If it runs from a tap in South Africa, unless it specifically says do not drink this, like you will find on golf courses, sometimes they'll put fertilizer in the water or things like that. Um, you can absolutely drink the tap water. We will supply bottled water on the buses, of course. It's just easier. And um, uh, at the hotels, in the hotels, they will be. But um, I would much rather, ladies and gentlemen, spend my money on the great beer and wine than we have here in South Africa than on water. <laughs> so drink it from the tap. You will not get sick, I promise you. Good advice. <laughs> now, it sounds like we are not going to go hungry on this tour. <laughs> Lots of food. Um, but from the sounds of it, it also looks like we're going to be walking it off. Um, what is the activity level for this tour? Yeah, you have to be fit and active to do this tour. Um, there's quite a bit of walking. You are in Africa, so steps are not always, you know, e equal heights and, and things like that. So, um, you know, if you're in a wheelchair or even walk with a walker or something like that, I would strongly advise that you don't do the tour. Um, if you have a cane and, and you can, you know, walk steadily, then it should be fine. But there is... Lots of getting in and out of the buses, lots of walking, yeah. Or the open air vehicles as well, getting on and off. Those can be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, okay. So you do have to be a good walker and be in good physical fit, condition. Fit and active, absolutely. Thank you, Peter. Now, most of the meals and sounds like a lot of drinks are included with the tour, which is fabulous. But there are some lunches that we will be purchasing on our own. Um, so what is the typical cost of, of lunch? Cost of lunch, um, it's usually between 50 and $20. That will include some, like a glass of wine, uh, so yeah, that's reasonable. Fifteen to twenty, we can budget for that. Um, and in terms of the local currency, what is the local currency, and do you suggest that we bring it with us or or purchase it there? Um, the local excuse me, the local currency is the South African rand. Um, you could perhaps get some of it uh, at your, uh, your your bank before you come. But if you bring US dollars, you can exchange that. I advise nowadays that people use their cards. Um, okay. You know, we have ATMs all over, so it's very easy to draw money um, from an ATM. Or you can present your card, whether it be a debit or a credit card for payment. Even, you know, flea markets nowadays the, the, the people that, that run the little stalls all have these small little credit card machines. So you can sign things to your room and then just pay with your credit card when you check out. You could almost come without any cash on this tour. Oh, good to know. And good to know that if you do need cash, that you can get it from an ATM, if, if that's the case. Yeah. Great. And we are also getting some questions online regarding the water shortage that you were experiencing in South Africa a couple years ago. Um, is that still the case or? No, no. I remember there was a lot of uh, uh, media about Cape Town going to get to day zero and all of that. No, it never happened. And um, it won't. Um, we had very, very good rainfalls. So it's not a problem at all. Anyway. Oh, that's great to hear. Great to hear. And now that you mentioned rain, let's talk about that. <laughs> um, in terms of preparing for this tour, uh, what kind of clothing do you recommend that we bring for you know the weather changes? Do we need uh, windbreakers or a jacket? Is there a rainy season? Well, um, Cape Town and surroundings, about two, 300 kilometers around Cape Town, they get rain in winter time. You will not be visiting in winter, so it's not a problem. The rest of the country gets rain in the summer, and it's usually in the form of thunder showers in the afternoon. Um, so there's no monsoon or anything like that. Um, for this tour, I would recommend that you dress casually um, and, and dress lightly. Um, comfortable, loose-fitting um, sort of uh, clothes, uh, comfortable walking shoes, sneakers are probably the best. A hat is always a good idea. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's not a formal tour. There's no need to bring any dress gowns or anything like that. Um, informal clothing, maybe a windbreaker for those early morning game drives uh, or a light jacket. 
Um, but in general, it'd be nice and warm. Wonderful. And now that you mentioned the game drives, uh, do you, are there any specific outfits that we should be bringing for those? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> no, just uh, you bring whatever you want. You know, there were many stories in the old days of you have to dress in khaki. Uh, <laughs> and so on. Most, most of the animals are actually colorblind, so it's not a problem. <laughs> Good uh, to know then. <laughs> Thank you for that. And uh, since you mentioned when we go to Victoria Falls, there is a, an optional uh, that we can take the helicopter ride over the falls. Yeah. Uh, do you happen to know what the cost of that is? Yeah, I can't remember offhand. Let me let me just quickly find out. Can you know what cost of helicopter ride? $65. I think I think it's about sixty-five US dollars per person. I, I can't remember offhand exactly how much it is. No problem. But, but it is worth it. Um, absolutely worth it. The excursion. Yeah. Fantastic. And again, we can use our cards if we don't have it in rand, uh, in cash. Yeah. We can use absolutely. our credit card. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All Perfect. US dollars there. Wonderful. And we are also getting some questions about mosquitoes and malaria uh, what kind of bugs may we encounter and how should we best prepare well this is africa ladies and gentlemen there are bugs all over the place as you call them um, <laughs> mosquitoes um, it's only one of the mosquitoes that actually carry the malaria we've got i think seven different kinds of mosquitoes it's only the anopheles mosquito that car carry the malaria virus <clears throat> but the chances that you will see a mosquito on this trip is, is quite slim. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you um, want to take malaria, if your doctor advises you to take malaria precaution. Excuse me one second, please. I get my throat now. Um, mm -hmm. so, so if your doctor prescribes malaria medication for you, then um, take it. I uh, go into the game parks all the time. And because I go so frequently, I can't take uh, the malaria pills. And I've never actually had malaria. I've never been sick. Uh, I believe that caution or precaution is more important. So the mosquitoes are active at night. Um, so as soon as the sun sets, you make sure you have long sleeve um, shirts, long trousers on the hands and the face that is exposed and the ankles and so on. Make sure that you put insect repellents on that. The hotels treat their rooms and their water uh, around the hotel, so you should be absolutely fine. Um, chances are good that you will actually not see a mosquito, but yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. Prepare with the long sleeves and the bug spray and talk to your, your doctor to see what they recommend as well. Perfect. Thank you. And lastly, uh, take us on a on a one day of the tour, what is a typical day like when we're there early mornings, arriving back at the hotel a bit later? Do we come back in between or? Most, most days um, are actually earlier starts and, and not too late to bed. Um, so you will usually get a wakey wakey around 6.30 or so in the morning, off to breakfast. <laughs> All the breakfast are included, buffet style. And then we'll start sightseeing. Um, lunch will more often than not be included uh, on the trip because we're out for the whole day. And then you normally get back to the hotel before we go out to dinner or sometimes have dinner back at the hotel. Usually the first evenings will be um, just buffet style in the hotel, but subsequent evenings, we like to take people out and have them experience all the culinary delights that we have in South Africa. So normally not back to the hotel later than between nine and 10 in the evening. Um, you know, so that's a typical day. It's a busy tour. You're going to be busy, 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 but there's so much to see and do and enjoy that um, you can sleep when you're dead or when you're back home or whatever. <laughs> 
<laughs> Agreed. Oh, Peter, sounds fabulous. Thank you once again for such an informative presentation and for taking the time to answer all of our questions. We are looking forward to seeing you there in October and November while we tour your amazing country. I will. Oza. <laughs> Thank you. I will now be asking a question for your chance to win a $100 future travel gift certificate with Senior Discovery Tours. The first person to place the correct answer in the Q&A box will be the lucky winner. And the question is, how many official languages are there in South Africa? Once again, how many official languages are there in South Africa? Don't miss our next exciting webinar taking place this summer, featuring the wonders of ancient Egypt with guest speaker, Emil Habib. Be sure to subscribe to our e-newsletter on our website to receive a free Zoom invite directly in your inbox. Stay tuned for details regarding upcoming webinars and our social media. If you would like to learn more about Senior Discovery Tours, please stay with us as I will be providing more details about our tour types and remarkable inclusions. As the leader in escorted group tours for over 45 years, we now offer over 200 tours and cruises, all with interesting itineraries, great value and quality. The best part is that all of our tours are guaranteed in Canadian funds with all the taxes included and no hidden fees. To ensure that you have a carefree experience, here are just a few of the things that we include on all of our tours. We offer additional inclusions to enhance your tour experience. Entry visas to those countries where it is required, waiting lists, and a Ruben matching program. Our optional services allow you to curate your own travel experience. We offer air extensions, flight upgrades, room or cabin upgrades, as well as optional excursions on select tours. Now, on to some of our exclusive tours and what they offer. We have flight plus coach tours. These are multi-city tours, which means more hotel changes and lots of movement, ensuring tons of excitement. Listed here are some of our more popular flight and coach tours. Just like the term suggests, these tours are best suited for those that enjoy staying in one location and exploring its surroundings. These tours are much more leisurely, allowing for time to relax and to also enjoy the excursions. Here are just a few examples. Next, we have our two and three center holidays. Focusing on two or three different regions or countries, these tours are excellent if you want to combine a couple of locations but still have plenty of time to explore. Listed are some of our most popular two and three center holidays. Another vacation type is our classical coach tour. These tours are perfect for those who do not care to travel abroad and wish to have an experience closer to home. Adventurous travelers who enjoy moving around while taking in incredible scenery love our walking and hiking tours. Truly a wonderful way to travel. Offering a completely different perspective and unique way of traveling, it's easy to see why our rail tours are becoming increasingly popular. For those wanting more adventure and never-ending opportunities for discovery, consider our exotic destinations. These tours are sure to delight anyone ready for an exciting journey. And lastly, Senior Discovery Tours now offers 30 different cruises in locations all over the world. You will have access to hundreds of activities and amenities, not to mention incredible views. Here are some of our more popular cruises. Now the time has come for our contest and we do have a lucky winner of a $100 future travel voucher with Senior Discovery Tours. Congratulations. We will be in touch with you shortly to claim your prize. And the correct answer is 11. South Africa has 11 official languages. How about that? <laughs> 
We are doing our very best to stay ahead of any travel related updates that may affect your current plans and to offer guidance when considering your next tour with us. Let's believe that this year's warmer months are going to open a lot more travel opportunities to foreign countries and the opportunity to get back to exploring our dream destinations. We will continue to offer the easiest, most enjoyable and informative booking process, which will soon include online booking. A big thank you to all of our loyal customers who have been posting such fantastic reviews on social media over the past year. Please continue to let us know about your past travels and memories with Senior Discovery Tours, and feel free to also send us any suggestions you have for future webinars. You can follow us on all social media platforms. These addresses can be found on our website. We hope to see you again at our next webinar. Please take good care of yourselves and each other and have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.